Hello, I am John Marshall Hall. Here I present my documentary, From Mir to Marcus, A Reflection on the History of Our History Program. It is but one of many documentaries within the oral history of the University of Laverne, ones that were made by those involved with the Honors 304, 351, Laverne, and I, our education course. In this particular documentary, I intend to show how the history program here at Laverne serves as a mirror to reflect the core values of this institution of higher learning and how art has been used as a means to teach history throughout the program's history. Specifically, I will focus on four faculty members involved heavily within the history program who epitomize the core values of Laverne. They are as follows, Gladys E. Muir, Herbert W. Hogan, Stephen P. Sales, and Kenneth H. Marcus. I chose these four faculty members in particular because they each represent a certain focus throughout the history of Laverne's history program. Of course, the history program here at Laverne, as with any history program at any institution of higher learning, it's not just about those who have taught it, but also about those who have learned from it. Thus, I have chose to include the perspective from students who have had these four professors into my documentary as well. The first person of distinction within the history program is Gladys E. Muir. From 1916 to 1921, she was a professor of Latin and Spanish. In 1919, she taught Spanish and history. And in the 1920-1921 school year, she taught Latin and history. From 1922 to 1948, she was solely a professor of history. In 1939, she wrote her magnum opus entitled Settlement of the Brethren on the Pacific Slope, a study in colonization. On June 23, 1941, a pageant for that book was held. In 1948, in recognition of the level of service and scholarship she brought to Laverne College, Gladys Muir was conferred an honorary doctorate of law. From 1948 to 1959, she went to Manchester College and continued to serve there as professor of history. After she retired, she came back to Laverne College to teach part-time. While at Manchester, she initiated the world's first ever peace studies program in any higher institution of learning. But on September 11, 1967, her life was cut short tragically. She fell from the eastern steps of Founders Hall the third most step from the top. She died shortly thereafter from severe head trauma at Pomona Hospital. She was preparing to teach an English history class that fall, and this tragedy shows her dedication to both the history program and her students, even to the very end. The impact Gladys Muir had upon Laverne's history program is evident in her service to the college and its community of students. From 1925 to 1927, students inside and outside Gladys Muir's History of the West course helped complete a brief history of Laverne College and community. Students consulted a wide variety of sources, which included Professor Brackett's History of the Pomona Valley, the Pomona Times Courier, and the Southern Californian, as well as personal interviews and letters. This project was followed by two historical pageants, both of which were held within the college auditorium, one in February of 1927 and another, a revised edition, in May of 1933. As evidenced by the enumerated episodes and scenes within the playbills, both historical pageants presented an idealized version of a college transitioning from struggle to renewal. Though the truth of the matter in retrospect seems more nuanced, the historical pageants for their time showed that critical analysis and the building on top of one another's research was employed when both were developed. Her impact upon the student body can be further seen through the development of the International Relations Club and the effect of her teaching style. Well, one of the effects was to widen the horizon of the students as their attention was focused on the International Relations Club in 1931. And shortly afterward, for the first time, a course in international relations was given in the college curriculum. Notably among the presidents of the International Relations Club included Armin Serafian from 1939 to 1940, Leland Newcomer in 1941, and Herb Hogan from 1942 to 1943. In a sense, the International Relations Club can be seen as a breeding ground for those who would be of great significance later on in Laverne's history. Her method of teaching placed great emphasis upon art, and how art can be used to further ascertain and gain a more critical understanding of various political and economic changes throughout history. Through a field trip to the Huntington Library in her modern European history class, Gladys Muir further cultivated the use of art as a historical tool. She made history engaging to those who thought it to be dull. Now here are some reflections from a couple of her former students. Gladys Muir was my Latin teacher, and Gladys Muir was my history teacher when I was a junior, and I enjoyed Gladys Muir very much. Uh, my mentor was Dr. Gladys Muir, one of the greatest teachers that the 
College has had and one of the greatest teachers that any of the Brethren Colleges has had. The second person of distinction within the history program is Herbert W. Hogan. As an alumnus and professor of history, Herb Hogan served his alma mater most faithfully. He served as dean under Harold Fosnack and Leland Newcomer, and also as vice president under Newcomer. Now here, as we went up to Founders Hall, we found the dean-elect history professor, Herbert Hogan. He recently made two trips to Nigeria where he assisted the Nigerian tr Christians in making an intensive study of the role of the church in that rapidly growing nation. So we had some exciting years for the next seven years uh, with Leland Newcomer. We modified the curriculum considerably and uh, got down to a place where we had practically no required courses. Uh, we introduced um, the concept that any course in the catalog ought to be, uh, the student ought to be able to challenge it. We introduced the whole idea of inter uh, independent studies and directed studies. Uh, some of these things we still have and some of them we've shuffled off. But most importantly, Herb Hogan shifted the focus of the history program more towards world history. Perhaps it was due to him being born in China to missionary parents. Perhaps this was due to his frequent contact with his mentor Gladys Muir, as her inner circle list can attest. Perhaps this was due to his experiences as a conscientious subjector in the civilian service program during World War II. Perhaps this was due to his aforementioned experiences in Nigeria. Or perhaps it may be a combination of all these factors. But whatever it may be, the focus of the history program had been refined towards world history. Seen here is the collaboration between Herb Hogan and his fellow colleagues for summer history courses. Among the summer history courses he taught involved trips to China and Mexico. In a similar vein, Herb Hogan also held classes outside, which emphasized the focus on world history further by enabling the students to become more engaged with the outside world surrounding them. Uh, yes, I'd say uh, Herb Hogan oh, Herb was, was my best teacher. Oh, oh. I, in high school, I hated history. Uh, but under Herb Hogan, he had a different way of teaching. Oh. He assigned you novels of the period ah. and so you read Anna Karenina about Russian uh, history or uh, can't think but there were others but that was his teaching tool and it really captured me. He was um, a scholar uh, and I still have books he gave me that has his notations in them <laughs> almost <laughs> on every page. Uh, and uh, he stayed here for 50 years. He was always working, doing something. And, um, and I felt if I can just come close to him, I'd, I'd have a successful career at Laverne. In addition to Russian history, courses in Asian history were also offered in the history program of Laverne. Courses in the history of Asia were offered under the auspices of John L. Jank. John Jang um, is, is an expert on the Orient. One of Herb Hogan's protégés was David A. Hollinger, who later taught history at the University of Michigan and at the University of California at Berkeley. Yeah, I think Herb is somebody who could have fit in a lot of places. I mean, his talent uh, was recognized by just about everybody that came into contact with him here, and I have no reason to doubt that that would have continued in other places. He was always very dedicated to the place, though, and in a way that was refreshingly unpretentious. Actually, in those days, there was um, a kind of cultural complacency about some people around Laverne, and Herb was refreshingly aloof from that. Uh, Herb was um, all the more commanding an example and a voice because of his own humility. And uh, I think that's something that would have been picked up just about anywhere. He's the sort of person that you want to welcome into any collegial community. I thought that Herb was the most critically engaged intellectual on the Laverne campus during my time, and I'll always remember him for that. I, I learned very quickly to look up to Herb Hogan to enlist him in terms of support and advice, and, um, more, uh, and most particularly when I became department chair in 1989, um, I had many uh, conversations with him late in the afternoon um, about certain issues about certain personalities and how to present myself and my arguments and things of this nature. I really looked to him for advice. Uh, um, Herb 
uh, like me, uh, was a Madisonian. In other words, we believed in the art of compromise. From incorporating novels into his curriculum to mentoring historians such as Steve Sales and David Hollinger, as Gladys Muir had mentored him, Herb Hogan made his impact on Laverne through the experiences he gave to those who sought his wisdom. The third person of distinction within the history program is Stephen P. Sales. History has gone under change since I came on board. It was pretty simple back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, when I became chairman, uh, we added things to it. We certainly uh, helped to develop the European com component of it. I treasure my time with my colleagues uh, over the years. To me, the department uh, had real characters, strong personalities, and real talent. During the 90s, I helped the department transition to a newer generation of faculty with the hiring of Richard Gill in American government, Kamal Sovichian in international relations and comparative political systems, Jim Lesseur in European history and French colonialism, Steve Slakey in geography, and Clark Kerr to handle constitutional law and legal issues. Fine-tuned some stuff. We've changed titles, but we kept the class in place. We updated in comparison to other schools. Steve Sales had particular focus on the American West and American history in general. Particularly, he created a course called Western Film and American Culture. Um, even so, teaching was and is my, my real love. In the classroom, I can relax. And um, my, the, the, I guess I come from uh, Mr. Vincent, uh, who taught history at, high, at, at Chico Senior High School uh, up north in Chico. He was my history professor there. And he, he, he liked to tell stories, and he was a good storyteller. And uh, he thought that history was art, that history was literature. And uh, it, it just absolutely appealed to me. Uh, but I, I basically believe history is art. When you get right down to it, it's art. I mean, you have to have a kind of a scientific rigor as to facts mm -hmm. and, and details. I mean, you can't really fudge that. But every generation looks at things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, what I try to do is make history understandable to the present. Similar to how Gladys Muir used art and how Herb Hogan used novels, Steve Sales used film in his classes to encourage his students to analyze history critically, more specifically to question why Hollywood portrayed the West in a certain manner or a certain way. Ultimately, Steve Sales emphasized personal judgment when it came to historical analysis. What is history, if not but to inquire, to inquire about topics such as the California mystique? Do you believe that your parents and even you yourself wholeheartedly believe in the California mystique then and still believe in it now? I, I think it's, uh, um, I think it's uh, not necessarily fiction, but I think it's a cultural uh, motif. People believe it. Um, people always have the safety, the, the, the the sense that if, if we fail here, uh, we can always go to California. California, going back to the days of Spain, has always been a mythical place, um, a, a, a place of tremendous civilizations um, and the like. And our history has shown very clearly that California lends itself to that. The impact that Steve Sales had upon Laverne could be best described by one of his colleagues and two of his former students. So please join me in welcoming this fellow historian, this warm-hearted colleague, and all-around gentleman, Steve Sands. Getting to take classes with two professors in particular really only enriched that uh, love of history. The first was Steve Sales, um, who is just an institution at the University of Laverne. Uh, going into one of his classes is an absolute pleasure. He's a master storyteller. <laughs> I almost <laughs> want to just put my notes aside and just sit back and listen the whole time. He's so entertaining. He makes history such a wonderful, positive experience. Brilliant man. Mm -hmm. Just just a brilliant man. And um, going to his classes was like storytelling. Like when you're in kindergarten and they read you the book. <laughs> and you had to take notes the whole time because it wasn't a matter if he handed out notes, you were on your own. You had to do your own reading, do everything on your own. But he would put everything together and he would talk up there that you you almost forget you're in a classroom. Mm. He had a way of tying, you know, the social, economic, industrial, everything together that everything made sense. Where you walked out the door, it wasn't dates, it was a situation, people, places. Mm. And um, 
I loved history, but I walked out of there understanding it. Right. And I understood what made history. Uh. And uh, just utmost respect. Brilliant. Brilliant man. Dr. Sells, you don't ask questions. You don't interact. He just sits up there, he talks, you <laughs> listen. Now here are some thoughts from Steve Sales on the trajectory of the history program. I don't think history is as strong a program in terms of student involvement as the poli-sci one is, according to the latest figures. Mm. Um, um, my leaving now hopefully will open the door for them to bring in a younger person um, um, who can take charge uh, or help to take charge and, and help to redevelop the, the program. The fourth person of distinction within the history program is Kenneth H. Marcus. As a professor of history at Laverne, the Chair of International Studies, and the President of the Historical Society of Southern California, Ken Marcus has particular emphasis upon cultural history, music history, and recently, public history. Uh, the other historian who I had the chance to work with is Ken Marcus, who is also just a terrific top-notch instructor. He very much likes to bring primary sources into class, uh, which means that he's looking at historical documents whether that's cultural texts, things like art, performance, music, or more traditional sources, like things that we might find in the archive or, or written texts. Uh, in 2009, when he was working on a book that he was publishing, which actually should be coming out relatively soon. Right, on Schoenberg, right? Yes, on yeah. Schoenberg, exactly. He invited me to be his research assistant. Oh. So I got to visit the University of California at Los Angeles and the University of Southern California to conduct research in their academic libraries. And that was the first time that I stepped into an archive, into this window, into the past. So it was a critical moment for me that, although it didn't happen on Laverne campus, is still linked to my experience at this school. As students have musical interests, it is through this medium, as well as others, by which history becomes more relatable, according to Ken Marcus. One major goal for the history program is for students to see shifts in their learning over time. As Ken Marcus remarked, students should not have to jump over one barrier after another. They should create their hoops through which they can jump. The goal for 200 level courses in the history program is for them to focus on a specific theme, such as immigration, to attract more majors and to give students a wider range of focus. The goal for 300 level courses within the history program is to combine lecture and discussion and to prepare students for senior seminars. The goal for 400 level courses in the history program should be on the senior seminar for them to emulate graduate level to some extent. A noticeable change within the history program recently is an increased emphasis upon public history. In fact, it began near the early days of this institution's history, back when William I.T. Hoover was dean. Indeed, in 1922, W.I.T. Hoover appointed Gladys Muir as a local historian, and she set the frameworks for the archives of today. In 2015, the University of Laverne appointed its first official university archivist, an alumnus of the University of Laverne, Benjamin Jenkins. But you'll be glad to hear uh, Ben uh, Jenkins tells me that they're starting some public history courses. Yes, they are, in the which is why he was hired. Mm -hmm. uh, right, exactly. When I was a student here, um, historian, history student, we didn't have classes like that. Ken Marcus in the Department of History once likened it to the university's soul. And how can you really know where you're going? How can you really understand what the institution is without preserving its soul? So that's why I'm so passionate, so excited about being the archivist here, because I really want to keep these documents safe, and I want to show everyone how important they are. Through these four figures, Gladys Muir, Herb Hogan, Steve Sales, and Ken Marcus, the history program embodies the core values of Laverne. Ultimately, the history program was built over time from the efforts of those who came before. From Gladys Muir to Herb Hogan to Steve Sales to Ken Marcus, it is evident that art has been used to teach history throughout the history of Laverne's history program. I would like to acknowledge Al Clark, Brian Best, and Benjamin Jenkins for all the resources and input they have given towards the completion of this documentary. I would like to also acknowledge all my classmates in Honors 304-351 Laverne and I are Education for all the input they have given me towards the completion of this documentary. Oral history interview excerpts I have used for the completion of this documentary include those of Ralph Click, Ann Coolier, Benjamin Jenkins, and Steve Sales. Listed below are videos from where I gathered excerpts for the completion of this documentary. Listed below are other sources I consulted for the completion of this documentary.